Shout out to Maha Minute, man. You did Maha Minute. He has needed to come be in it. You did what I'm saying. Then I see hundreds, I can't look away. So much damn money, you fill up the safe. Think that it's funny that us want to play. Maha Minute, number one podcast in the universe. Today, we live with an Atlanta legend, Guap Tarantino, man. What's the word? What's good? What's good, gang? You good? How everything treating you, gang? Hell yeah, man. Just, just living life. Just trying to progress, make some money, and, and get better, man. Yeah, so, so. Same thing, man. Working. Hell yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I actually, uh, I know this is kind of besides the point, but, you know, Future and the whole Atlanta scene is like my favorite music. You know, before I even ever started doing interviews and stuff like that, I was listening to y'all. So this is kind of a... You know, it's a surreal moment for me, so I appreciate you for coming on the show. Man, it's love, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Hell yeah. Well, let's let's get right into it. So, um, where are you originally from? I'm from I'm from Decatur. I stayed in I stayed in Edgewood though too. Edgewood, Kirkwood. Then I, I moved back to Decatur. I really grew up on the east side of Decatur. Okay. Okay. So you were born in Decatur? Yeah. And then my grandma my grandma stayed my grandma my grandma done stayed in Israel. I had grandma stay in Israel. She had a house in Kirkwood too. Everybody all of us every summer we used to all go over there. Ever since we was little, like always over there. Always in my grandma's house. I went right at home like that. Oh yeah. I was watching, uh, I think it was a No Jumper interview. You uh, grew up in Zone 6? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's where your grandma lived, you say? Yeah. Because I was with my grandma. Okay. Were, were your parents, like, in your life? or? Yeah, they was in my life. It's just, like, my dad, my dad was locked up 10 years. And my mama, she was a, she was a, she's a hustler. So like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what was life like before rap? Were you like playing sports or anything growing up? Yeah, I, I tried shit. I got kicked out of the football team because I ain't really go to practice. And then shit, I really just fuck this sports shit. Like when I was like sixteen, I was just like shit. I'm gonna do something else, but I'm a rap. Hell yeah! What what position were you in football when you did play? I played I played nose guard. And you just you just said, nah. You you why why'd you get kicked off? You said you got kicked off? Yeah, cause I wasn't going to practice. Cause I feel like I ain't had to practice cause I was fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I I always I feel like I had to go to practice. And coaches do whatever I like that shit. So what what age did you start rapping? Shit, I've been rapping like since I was like 10, just playing around and shit, I didn't start taking it serious though until I was like 17, 18. Okay. Who were like, who were some of the, the rappers and the artists you were listening to growing up? Uh, I usually listen to everybody, like from Atlanta. Like, everybody, I usually, everybody from Atlanta, I usually listen to T.I. Outkid. Ludacris, I had all that album. Like, cause you like growing, it was really like first like growing up whatever my mama done listen to rappers and all that. And then goddamn, I started liking like Lil Wayne and shit like that. I used to listen to Michael Jackson and shit though growing up. Hell yeah, that's dope. So you had a, a diverse influence, you would say? Yeah, hell yeah. I ain't start want. I wanted to be an entertainer. I ain't got damn know what it what it was though. I, like. If it was rapping, what it was gonna be, because I used to like watch Michael Jackson do all this shit. So I ain't know, like, I just knew I wanted to be like on stage and shit like that. And then rapping, it just ended up being rapping. I knew I was gonna be an entertainer, though. That's dope. So, as far as like entertaining, like, did were you trying to be like a comedian or like get into like dancing and shit? Or, or what, what did you? No, nah, I just know how to do all that shit. Like, I'm just, I just always knew how to do all that shit. Like, and in school, like, I used to always be in the plays and musicals and shit like that. Like, I just always been in music. I always been on stage since I was little. Like. 
Okay, that's dope. That's dope. Uh, since you brought up Outcast, wasn't he uh, connected with Future, like like back in the day when when Future kind of first started coming out with like the dirt? Yeah, hey, yeah, they, hey, yeah, cause our cousin uh, Rico Wade, so, hey, you know, Danger Family and all that. I was young as hell though, but and right, right, that's dope. So, since you brought up the entertaining too, you just reminded me. I actually um, I did an interview with with Stick Baby like three years ago, and. Um, we we he FaceTimed you and you <laughs> uh, you said uh Rare Rare Rex you you did the I don't know I would say that's kind of like your uh, oh yeah I remember that yeah yeah hey, I did uh, my ad lib Rare Rare Rex where where did that come from you just just entertaining or what I, I always said Rex like that like I always like you be like Rex like, and then like but I ain't I don't know at first it was Rex then it was Rat Rex and then it was Rare Rare Rex. <laughs> Like, I just always said Rex, like, like that. And then, you know, man, I might be like, Rex, Rex, because I used to be like, yeah. I just always said Rex, and then Rex, Rex, Rex just end up just being said repetitive. So, I just was like, everybody like that, everybody like that. But I always said, like, Rex. And then me and Thug, me and Thug had that song, we dropped, I dropped like three years ago, called Loose Crew. And me and him was going back and forth on it. And we were both like, Rex, 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 Rex. Man, shit, that was like that was like just solidified. Like that would make me just be like, yeah, we racking, racking, rack, rack, rack all day. <laughs> like, would you say that was like one of your your first breakthrough through his? Because that's that's definitely one of my favorite songs of yours. That's in my. I ain't gonna lie, Geico won my slept on mixtape. Like all the songs on there, light shows on there, loose groove, block boy. All the songs is on there, but Block Boy, Block Boy ain't get hacked from that from that mixtape. Block Boy got hacked from the video. I ain't dropped the video till like six months later. So it was just like that Geico mixtape too hard for us. Need to go back and tune in to that one. That one been before here this time. Hell oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I was watching a, I think it was a No Jumper interview. And I think it might have been another platform. You said you you got shot at nineteen. Hey, yeah, I got shot. I got shot when I was nineteen on some humble shit at a party. So it was just kind of like an accident, basically. Yeah. What did you like learn, and, and, and like how did you grow from that situation? You know, it's just you know, like environment. Like I always grew up around that type of shit, but it's just like shit when you got down. It's just vibe and shit. You just gotta know how to get down move when you got down everywhere you at. It don't matter where you at, that shit go down anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Okay. I always be on point. Stand up P's and Q's. Okay, okay. So let, let's talk about the music a little bit. Bring us back to Fat Boy season. What was the direction for that mixtape? See, me and Quay, that was that was that's the mixtape that 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 we came up with the tag that cooked that shit up, Quay. Goddamn, me and Quay, we just locked in, and then it was Thanksgiving, goddamn break. He had Thanksgiving break, he still was in high school. So I was over his house Thanksgiving break, and he like, shit, you might as well drop on Thanksgiving on some fat boy shit. I said, shit, we're going to call it fat boy season, shit, Thanksgiving, fat boy season. So that's how that happened. Just, we did it, we did it, we did that whole mixtape and like a Hell yeah, yeah, we did that whole mixtape in like a week and then dropped it. Okay, okay. So, you know, coming up, like, were you, what were some of the moments where you're like, damn, like, I could actually make music, make money, and be successful with this? What was, like, that first moment where you were like, damn, like, I'm actually getting somewhere with this? Or was it kind of natural, like, you know, given you're in, basically, like, the mecca of hip-hop, I would say, still to this day? It was like, shit, it was kind of natural because it's like, when I wasn't even getting paid for shows, like, that shit used to make me happy. Folks got down, just jumping down, paying attention to my shit, got down, liking my shit, got down. When I get off stage, folks showing love, like, that shit started happening more and more. Then, got down, camera started coming out, shit, then, shit, money started coming in. Like, it just happened naturally, like, I just knew it, like, I just knew it if I kept going, shit, this shit wasn't gonna do nothing but get bigger, because 
See, I, I, everybody always said when they see me, they they like I, they knew I was gonna like I'm star type shit. So it's like some of they tell you this shit all your all your life, regardless of who you know who you with. Goddamn shit, you gotta see it. You gotta go go see what they're talking about. Right. Okay. I was gonna ask this earlier, but you know, given that you you grew up in a, in the Atlanta area. Is that mostly just like what people are listening to, you know, given there is so many artists coming out of that area in specific, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm coming from from Denver where like, like, yeah, we got we got dope artists out here, but everyone's listening to Atlanta out here. Everyone's listening to Texas, Cali, all these different states, New York. But it seems like a lot of the Atlanta artists like support their own and, and listen to their own. Like, would you say that's true? Yeah, but no, I listen to other artists, but I don't at the same time. But like, when, like if a person drop, I go listen to it, check it out. You feel me? If I if I'm cool with them, like I don't. It just depends. Like Atlanta, like like we done became one. Like we been one of like one of the main music like places for music and shit. So it's like shit. That shit be different when you from here, cause we one of the main. That's like niggas in New York. They probably. Or niggas ain't got them. They probably listen to majority of New York people than alum. Just cause, like, they feel like they part, they one of the main people in, in the music industry. One, so, uh, I listen to everybody, though, like, but I still listen to old music, so it's just like. Okay, okay, dope. Now, there's a, there's, I, I wouldn't say it's a meme, but it's like people, people say that artists from Atlanta really support each other you know, compared to other cities where it's like, it's more of a competition, crabs in a bucket mentality. Now with you actually being from there, would you say that's true or is it still like a competition in a way? I mean, it's true. It's true to an extent that's like, shit, that's all. Okay, okay. I feel like you can almost get that in any city. It just seems like, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of love. It's on. I I think I really be like. I feel like it. I think it's on like your street cred, bro. Yeah. Gotta have some street cred. I ain't no any cred nigga. So it's like I always had street cred. So like I just fuck with me because I was in, in the streets like them. So that shit make you like you know what I'm saying. Like we street people who talent. So shit that make people got them work. You know what I'm saying. Okay, good. What is some of the lingo or like things you feel like Atlanta got popular in the industry? Shit, all that shit. No cap. <laughs> uh, everything person saying, man, that shit came from Atlanta, man. Cotton Girls, Twin, all that shit. That, that shit came from Atlanta. Everything. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't know nothing else that nigga just say that that's get said repetitive that ain't came from Atlanta or the South, period. Like, right. Right. Okay, dope. So, how did you tap in with free bands? I was born in free bands. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's my family. That's my cousin, though. Like, that's my family. How did y YFBG get started? Uh, Me, my brother Dino, and my cousin Tim, we all the same age. So, we was like in like 2011. 2010, around time, we couldn't, we, um, I think that was, I want to say that was around time, he dropped Dirty Sprite. Yeah, by the time he dropped Dirty Sprite, that one we made YBG. Like, we was just like, man, we're going to make a young version of them, because they were like our big cousins, so we was like, we're going to make young free band for all, all the little cousins since the big cousins. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how y'all got started, and then we was just going around saying it. And then like, cuz never said like, like we couldn't do it, so we just kept kept it going. And he always like, was cool with it. And then shit. when he started getting bigger and bigger, he started tuning in more to it and stuff. He started saying it himself, like yeah, free game game, Right? No, that's dope. That's dope. So is, is future your cousin? Yeah. Okay. What is uh you know being being he's an all time legend, what is different about future compared to you know some regular artists in the industry? He he future like 
You can't compare that nigga. That's why he got it. Like he the wizard. He can't. He can't. No other wizards. He Pluto. So, what is some game you picked up from being around him? As far as the music and all that goes. A lot. I picked up a lot. The best, the most, the most game does work. Like you gotta outwork everybody, right? Like you gotta even try to outwork him. You, you wouldn't around him, like, cause it's just like it's all about working in the day. Work. That's dope. That's dope. Is there any like, like real surreal crazy moments with Future that kind of sticks out with you? Like maybe crazy shows, or or anything crazy studio moments or anything that? Yeah, I mean. My favorite moment gonna always be like when he brought me out rolling loud. That was like legendary. When was that? Uh, 2019. My uh, the first rolling loud I had there, 2019. That's dope. That's dope. You know, I I know uh like he will always say y'all were like studio junkies and stuff like that. Is it true like? Y'all are just always in the studio like that, just making new music? Yeah, yeah, I've been in the studio. I've been in the studio. He used to tell me, like, bro, you got to do something else. Cause, like, I've been in the studio. That's all I do. Like, I just got, hey, I'm programmed to, like, just be in the studio. Cause it's just like Pluto, King Slime, they going to be in the studio 24 7. So, like, being around them. So many years, you got no choice, but you don't really want to be nowhere else because you done got so used to just being in the studio. Right, right. I feel like an artist fell off when he ain't got no more studio time. What do you think is the longest, like, like the longest amount of time straight? Like, how many hours straight have you been in the studio before? Like, a week. Because <laughs> the studio had a shower and so it was like. Just in that, in there all week working. That's dope. Okay. Where would you uh where would you rank Future among the top rappers of this generation? Like he was just ranked number one by I think it was GQ recently. Like where would you rank him? Nah, he definitely number one for sure because he's just like in his versatility, like and and he he like and no matter how how much other artists another artist there. A lot of artists get stuff from him, so it's just like that. We're gonna always make him number one, cause it don't matter if they say it or not. They know you hear it in songs, so it's like that's gonna always be a respect thing, cause he humble about it. So it's like that would make you number one when you don't even rub it in folks' face. Too. Everyone else says it for him. That's real. Yeah, like yeah, like okay. That's how I be though. I let my music do the talking. What's your favorite Future album, if you had to pick one? Probably like DS2 and like A Thousand. I always go back and listen to A Thousand, just cause it's like, that was his, like, A Thousand No Mercy, Dirt Sprite, like he was like, it was like, he always, every mixtape he be hungry, but like, you know how I be with like, them hunger mixtapes right there, like. What is your favorite personal album that you've dropped or taped? My favorite album, my favorite album probably is Guap Mode. Like, Guap Mode, like, that's a good album. I always go back and listen to, like, just to see, like, even on my transition and track listing, like, how I did it and all that. Like, cause Guap Mode, I feel like that was a, a good, a real, like, good album for a nigga. So it's like, everybody always talk about that album, go back and listen to it. That one, Charge Em Up, too. So it's like, yeah, Charge Em Up. Yeah, Charge Em Up might be my favorite. They ain't Guap Mode. But them two for sure, like, they, like, right there. Hell yeah. If if there is one song you could be featured on all time from any genre, any artist, shout out my boy Sperry Springer. This is his question. What what song would it be? Uh, That's a tough one. Yeah, cause I get on a lot of songs that don't get big, like every jump, like I probably would have got on that Drake and Future song when they were doing the video when they were doing the soccer shit. Oh yeah. That was a big song for that. High of Life? Yeah. Nah, it was uh damn, I can't remember the name of it. I know what video you're talking about. Yeah, all the 
That one or uh I get on that um that crib brown thug song they drop. Uh it's a couple songs, man, but one song though, it'll probably be that that Drake and Future song. The one they dropped last year? Nah. Oh, used to this. Yeah, used to, oh, used to this. Yeah, I can get you to the that song. Yeah, that song. That's a good one. Okay, bet. Is there uh, any new work you got coming out with Future, or would y'all ever do a tape together? Man, cuz we probably already got two albums together already. Like, we got real boats. Like, cuz got a real boat. He got like three hard drives for me. I got like two. Like, but hey, yeah, me and cuz, like, we, so we always talk about it. So you know it's coming for sure. Hell yeah. So how did uh how did you meet Young Thug like? I met I met Schlein with uh at the studio one time with Pluto when they was like cause they was in the studio together for like two years straight. Yeah. So it was like that's how I met him like, and then boom and then I, he he asked for my number, and then he started calling me and said then I started hanging with him too, and then Casino or I might pull up with Casino. That's how I met Lil Baby cause I was riding with Casino. And it was like when the baby first got out, he had put up on slime, and they went. We went out for his birthday, and that's when I met little baby too. Like so, yeah. Like slime just always been around the family and stuff. So. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. Rest in peace to little Key. You know what kind of impact do you feel I like he Key, he left man. on the Atlanta rap scene? Oh, Key left big impact on me. Like, it was a time where, like, you weren't hearing nobody's name but me, Key, and guys. Like, so it's like, a lot of people, like, look, love his energy and stuff. Like, your energy, all that, your attitude, all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that counts. All that make you, like, who you is. You know what I'm saying? That's why he left Earth so big, like how he did, because he already knew how big he was then. You feel me? Right, right. How did y'all end up meeting? Was it was it through? Yeah, I, I was with Slime. I was with Slime when he was finna sign him. But I didn't know we was cousins then. Like, we didn't know we was cousins. But I was with Slime when he was finna sign him. Like, ah, I met him. He pulled up to the studio. He was quiet, cool, quiet, red hair. <laughs> you said y'all were cousins? Yeah. And you didn't even know? Yeah, cause we cousins on my mama's side. Like my grandma had told me, my grandma and my mom them had called me one day like, that, uh, that, that boy you was dancing with in the studio the other day, your cousin, with the red hair. And I was like, red hair? And I had to go, I went down like, for real? Then uh, we, we, I, we found out like the same day, cause I guess our cousins was talking. So like the same day my, my mom them told me, our cousin them told them. And then we, we went and still was like, man, we cousins. <laughs> That's dope. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Okay, Bill. Uh, what's uh, your favorite concert you've performed at so far? Rolling Loud, cool. Some, some, some smell cool too, though. But Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud, cool, yeah. Rolling Loud. What, was it in Miami or? Yeah, Miami one. Miami one be lit, though. I, I ain't never went to the one in LA, though. That shit would be dope. Have you ever been to Denver? Yeah, I went. I had went to Denver before for a weekend. I had, uh, it was my, uh, I had went out there for a wedding. Hell yeah. You got to come do a show out here sometime. Hell yeah, for sure, man. That was, uh, y'all got, y'all got the green out there. I got to come see what's on the scene. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so are you currently signed or are you independent? I mean, you know, like, free band independent, so it's like, I'm saying big independent. Right. Okay. Okay. Would you want to sign, or or what would it take for you to get signed? Yeah, I'd sign for sure. It just got to all make sense. It got to make sense, because it just got to make sense, because it's the battery. Right, right. Okay. What you think? Can we get a, a little got it in a guap album this year? Man, we was talking about it the other week, man. Like, 
We was talking about that shit. Like, we just gotta get down. We be moving around so much. Like, me and Cud just gotta get down, lock in. But we were definitely talking about it because the songs we got, all our songs hard, but we just want to do some new shit. Just new, new shit, new way for everybody. How was the um, recording process for G6? <laughs> well, it was like a G6. <laughs> Fair enough. Went up and then landed and we're done. About two days. Do you have any features releasing soon? Uh, I got a couple features. Like, I got a couple features I was going to think about releasing. Like, I got this own song called New Feeling with Cardi. Shit like that. Me and me and Pluto, might, I might get get somebody shit, some guapin' Pluto shit. You know what I'm saying? I just really just, I'm really just planning on around, like, how I want to drop it, you feel me? But I just know I'm going to keep dropping because I got too much music. I make music every day. Right, right. Well, well how, how does that go? Is it like you kind of just drop, try to drop as much music as you can? Or, or do you like, you know, have a process of, okay, I'm going to pick and choose which songs to drop? It'd be a process. It'd be a process, but like, I feel like once you start getting people attention with your when you dropping and shit, that's that's when you really master gas and keep dropping. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one thing I feel like I've noticed from like like your albums and your tapes, your music and like the people around you is like y'all just keep dropping, you know what I'm saying? Even you know, for like future, like he's been dropping albums after albums for years on end, like and you you see like some artists in the in industry like a Kendrick Lamar for example who you know him or J Cole they'll drop an album and then they'll kind of disappear for a couple years and you know it, it builds that anticipation I guess but you know y'all just keep on the gas like what keeps really, y'all so motivated to keep working Yeah like I don't really know if it be about like they craft man or like how they feel about it. I don't know cuz it's like I just I love music. I, the, the best part is when people hear it. So it's like, I'm always drop. I don't really be, I, I'm drop. That's why I, I love music. Like, this is this is it. Like how people like, chefs love they sh like, like, they gonna always cook. I'm always make music. Like them talking about them chefs who done got rich. And got other restaurants, but they still cook at their main restaurant that they got rich at. Like that type vibe. Like it's just like when you love this shit, you love it. You love how people feel about it. Why don't you want to just keep dropping? If folks want guac, I'm gonna get a guac into guac. I'm gonna get a guac forever. I got so much of this shit. Yeah, yeah, guac that. Right, right. Okay. What what are some of your goals? Do you do you kind of just go with the flow and just keep dropping, or do you have any goals as far as, you know, the music? Do you want to get some records? Like, what are some goals? Yeah, I, just, I, I want my music to, like, I want my music to make the world feel better, so it's just, like, that's just a big-ass goal. Hell, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like I told you, like, first first person I started watching Entertain with Michael Jackson, that nigga used to get on stage and put his hand up and folks cried before he even got and showed his face. Like, I want that type feel. Like, that's how much people love and respect him and were waiting on him to change the world, too, while he was changing it. You feel me? Like, that's big shit. No, that's real. Do you feel like uh, Atlanta is still the mecca of, of rap and hip hop right now? Yeah, definitely. Atlanta, Chicago, uh, Memphis going crazy, Texas, and the South, like Florida and shit, and uh, Louisiana, Alabama's starting to go up too, Carolina, everybody going crazy, like everybody working, like this shit, this shit fine, this shit like the NBA. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Where do you see it going from here as far as the Atlanta scene? I feel like I'm the type of person, like, it don't matter how rich I am, I'm always, like, standing in Atlanta. Like, even if I travel and stay somewhere for six months or a year, so I'm always be at Atlanta because I'm just an Atlanta nigga. Right, right. Yeah, like, Atlanta, like, I I'm glad, like, Atlanta came one of the big places for, like, 
just entertainment period. Cause it's like it's just cool. Make it even better, easier. Right. So you would never want to move? I mean, I go visit places, like I'd be on some six months to a year, live here, live there, but come back home like, like that type of vibe. Right. Okay, okay. I don't really get into that movement. I don't see why I, I don't see why artists move out of the city. And any problem I'm having in my city gonna get him family and everything. Like we ain't running from no problems. That's dope. That's dope. What's next for Guap? I know we uh talked about some goals and stuff like that, but is there any other shows, any any tapes, anything for the people to be uh, on the lookout for? Yeah, just on the lookout for me, period. Like, I'm back in that mode, like, I'm back in guap mode, like, guap mode two type vibe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just back in that mode, like, everybody. Is. I'm just in there, I'm dropping music, shows, everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everything back charged up, I'm recharged. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that's dope. Okay. So, you know, obviously, you know, Thug and Gunna and, you know, the YSL records have, have been in the news for, you know, being locked up. I mean, have you talked to Thug or do you have any, like, positive messages for the fans in regards to that situation? Man, free slime there, man. You just got to stay prayed up, man. The folks going to be all right, though, man. The people got the people heart so big, man. They, the folks going to be all right. God got them. God got them for real. So I'm a person who... I'm a dream chaser. I live out my dreams and stuff. So reality, when we got to deal with reality, it's just us dealing with reality. You know what I'm saying? But we, we already done made it off our dreams, so our dreams going to overcome reality regardless. No, that's for real. Do you feel like, you know, rappers have freedom of speech nowadays? I feel like we do because it will be like, shit, yeah, I don't know we what we talking about. For real. Yeah, I just, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's just like a movie. You know what I mean? The movie stars that did. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like movie stars. That's like you trying to chastise a movie star off of every movie he did. <laughs> like the way you snapped his neck, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's lame. But you just got to stay prayed up, man. Free, free YSL, free Slime, and free Shuggle, family. Oh yeah, okay, bet man. Where can the people find you on uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, man. Everybody, fam. Everything. Guac Tarantino. You dig? Guac Tarantino. Instagram. Guac Tarantino. YouTube. Guac Tarantino. Everything. Guac Tarantino. Spit Guac. You dig? Tank top Guac. All right, bet man. Make sure y'all go. Y'all go follow Guac Tarantino on everything: Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. All that links will be in the description. Make sure y'all hit that like button, comment down below who you want to see next on the Mile High Minute, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell button to stay notified when all the latest news drops. Yeah, man, shout out to everybody, man, who fucking with me, man, I'm fucking with y'all, man, it's up, this year it's up for sure, everybody, everybody, shout out everybody, you, everybody, all right. Everything, 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 man. It's, it's going to be a big green on the scene type of shit going on, man. No cap. Shout out to Maha Minute, man. You did. Maha Minute. He has needed to come be in it. You did what I'm saying. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate it. You did, man. Rap, rap, rap. Whoa, pit unactivated. Whoa, pit unactivated. Whoa, pit unactivated. Come on, trip.